guys, I wanted to share with you what I pulled out of the Half Price Books store dumpster today. And you know what? I think there was probably even more stuff in there. I wasn't even paying attention to what I was pulling out. I had no idea I had pulled this out. Um, I just grabbed some things. I grabbed a couple of books and I left. And I get home and I start looking at this stuff because, I don't know, I just... My mind, I don't know, I, I, I was looking for books, not for this stuff. I almost didn't pick any of it up because I don't want more junk at my house I can't sell. And lo and behold, I get home and it's this. So this is a Straight Talk Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, Galaxy Core Prime. Um, they have it marked at $55. And um, the phone is in here, all the cords are in here. I don't even know... Um, my husband will take carousel on that for me. This is a Jawbone, um, kind of like a Fitbit. They had it marked at 30. It's a size large, maybe that's what the L stands for. And it is to monitor your sleep, your movements, and your eating. And then there is this Asus router. It's a wireless router. And it's marked at 100. And it is all here. And it was just thrown into the dumpster. Here is an Apple TV that Apple TV that was thrown in the dumpster. They have it marked at $9.99. And then I found this as well. FDNY 911. And he has a fellow. Oh, that's a flag. Is that a flag? Or a fellow's jacket. Yeah, that's a flag. I can see the stars right here. I thought maybe it was another fireman's jacket. And he's on his knees um, crying. You can see that he has it up to his face and um, very emotional. My husband is from New York. He did not live there when the attacks happened, but he's from New York. It's just his roots. Um, he loves New York dearly, and we went to see the new towers. It's before the towers were open, but the pool was there, and some of the memorabilia was there, and it was... Um, heart-wrenching to say the least. So there's that. And then um, this book is from 1891. It's just a cute little story. I've read a few pages of it just to kind of get a, a gist of what it's about. It's just a couple who, uh, I, I think it's um, a mom and a dad and a couple of kids and they buy, uh, they buy an abandoned farm and move into it. Behind Enemy Lines, this one is, there's multiple stories in here. And they're all true stories. That's really cool. I just did a video today speaking of how God has, well, I'm just now thinking about this, how God for a long time when I was chasing after God and just so in love with him and just wanting to absorb, I mean, I just wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus all day long. And I did that quite often, just sitting and praying and speaking and reading and, and just talking with him and just absorbing him and through part of that he my my spirit I got a sense from my spirit that I could read the Bible I could do Bible studies and in between the Bible studies I could sometimes read books on the Bible but God just would not let me bring any outside sources in it was all just directly from him it was such a beautiful moment it was years long the only thing he would allow me or my spirit would allow me to read outside of the Bible in a Bible study are war stories, Holocaust stories, survivors of like the Turkish wars and the Bosnian wars. And so to, I just did that today and then I found this. I, that I just realized I found this today. Um, and it's wars or it's stories about the Holocaust and um, let's see. Other real-life heroes risk all for their country. A young woman determined to help allied forces escape Nazi-occupied France. So, I mean, yeah, so there's there's a couple of different stories in here. The Constitution of the United States of America. So, this just kind of walks through um, explaining to you about the Constitution. I always, this is probably the third or fourth book I have picked up on the Constitution. It seems like lately, every time I go there... I find something about the Constitution. One of the ones I have is pretty old. It's from like 1920s, I think. I have a girlfriend who in her church, her she's a seamstress, and her ministry <clears throat> is teaching women to sew. 
And so she's got a class together. It started with like three, within a couple of weeks, it was already up to 15 or so women. Some of the women already know how to sew, so they're there to help those who don't. And I put out on my neighborhood Facebook that my girlfriend does this and that they need extra sewing machines because some of these people don't, they just, I mean, why? I personally would not go out and buy a sewing machine if I didn't know how to sew. And so I actually had two of my neighbors donate brand new sewing machines that they bought to learn how to sew or for their teenager to learn how to sew and they never did and it's just been sitting. And then she, my girlfriend posted on hers and got, I think, three more sewing machines. And then in this same church, there's a couple of ladies who love to knit baby, like newborn hats and little Afghan blankets. And I found probably 30 or more yarn, uh, spools of yarn that I gave to her to give to those women. And so, like I said, in the end, this sewing group will actually donate all of their items to a charity that gives to hospitals and fire trucks and police the uh and policemen to wrap kids up in when they're cold or whatever there is a missionary and his wife that well i mean i guess they're both missionaries that are at this church for a while and um, they're not going back out into the foreign uh mission field for a while and she is making candles as a new business and this is cool it has 30 homemade recipes so i think that's really cool i think she'll enjoy this Although I would love to keep this. I mean, this is a really nice, nice magazine. And I guess it's really more of a, of a how-to book and not a magazine. But these came from Joanne's Fabrics. And so because my girlfriend has a sewing ministry, ministry that's what all this is, my whole um, story is about. This is for her friend that is part of the sewing group, but she is also making candles and soaps. Um, these I just got for my table. This is Magnolia, uh, the Magnolia magazine. There were tons of those in there. Quite a few of these. I grabbed all they, all I could in these. There was only one of those. And then I probably have seven or eight different quilting magazines in the garage. And there's how-tos and patterns and things in there as well. And I will give all of those to my girlfriend to give to her sewing group to take home. So anyway, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun tonight. This is from Kirkland's. It is broken, it is missing this, but this is pretty common, I bet I could find that. And that, that I know of is the only thing that is wrong with this little piece. I will sell it, I do not plan to keep it. It has a price tag of $30. And then you have this clock. Now this clock is, I mean, when I first got it, I almost didn't take it. I thought, oh, it's broken, it's damaged, and it's not. It's not damaged. I hadn't even looked for a price. They marked it down to $30. I don't know what the original price was. It says $39 and then clearance of $29. And it may have just been $39. I don't know. But I put a new battery in it. Make sure it works. Um, I already have a large clock in my kitchen. I may switch it out. Um, or put... I don't really have any other place to put this. I just might sell it. All right, guys, it is one o'clock in the morning. I did not find, I've not found makeup in two days. That is a shocker for me. I always find makeup, um, but not today. So I just got home 30 minutes ago and I can actually go straight to bed. This is what my boxer does. She comes in between my legs and begs for attention. Say, hey, Angel. This is Angel. She is 10 years old. Angel, say hi. Hit. <laughs> Bye, guys.